Welcome to Explain It Like I'm Five. What's up with record variables? Hey, I'm Eric. And um, that's actually a question I have received numerous times. So, what is the story with record variables? Uh, and especially for people who come from other frameworks, other platforms, uh, it seems strange that we just got record. That's the only thing we got. Um, where because other system you're used to the functionality that we have built into record, um, kind of separated into different things. Um, and perhaps this is one of the, the occasions where it's easier for me to to show with some code. So let's get right into it. Um, so here is my Visual Studio code, and of course I can create a, a variable and say this a customer, and I select the table. Uh, so now I have a record variable on the customer table. I call it customer. I could create another one. Uh, so now I have two. I could keep on going with this. I could actually create a third one and tell that this one is temporary. So now I have three different record variables. But what does that actually mean? I think let, let's break that down for a second. So um, if we have just one, let's get rid of the two others so we don't confuse ourselves or confuse me. So the record in this case, so let's let's uh, so we of course we have the record meaning that um, I can do customer dot name that's a field in the record. Um, oops, let's actually do this right. That's a field in the record. So I, I have all the fields. That's great. That that that's probably the easiest thing to understand. But at the same time, the the record variable is also a table information, meaning that normally in other places, and I say normally, but not normal for me because this is normal for me. Uh, we have a separation in perhaps we have a data set uh, variable, or we have a table variable and a record variable inside that. There, there is a, a hierarchy. But there in the business central record, there is no hierarchy. There's just record, meaning that let's say I want to build a where clause. Um, so I will do customer dot set and I have two options. I can do set filter and then I specify that I want to set filter on name. Oops. And I want to get all customers that start with Eric. So now I have set a filter. So this is this is the the data set perspective that now we're not actually thinking about a specific record. Uh, and if I, I if I change this to be uh, Peter instead, at this point, customer.name still contains Eric because that's the record we have in memory now. So the record, you can say that, that that's, that's, a, that's kind of a pointer to a specific record. And the record variable can only have one pointer at the time. But it's when we look at the record, the let's call it the data set. Uh, so the a set of records. When we look at it from that perspective, now we have set a filter and and that filter is sitting there, even though the, the, the record we have in memory right now does not uh, fulfill the filter. It's outside the filter because the filter is set. So it's kind of two, not independent because they're very dependent, but two separate pieces uh, of functionality. Meaning that now I could go and say, okay, customer find first. So now I'm, I'm asking, to go to the database and query the records from the filters I have set. Uh, so now I'm still working with this, but find first will 
take the pointer to the current record. So the pointer to the to a specific record is being set. In this case, find first or it will set the pointer to the first record within the filter I have set. I can set multiple filters if I want. So I can do a set filter on um, on address also and say I want all addresses that has a nine in it, for instance. Not right now, we just do text filters. I could also do filters on on other. So let's say I wanted, and and we have two ways of setting filters. So set filter is one of them. The other one is set range. And set range is typically if if we're working with uh, with stuff where there there is a range from in SQL, it will you can translate that into between. Um, a where clause where with a between uh, modifier, um, but here it's just you know you specify two numbers. So we could go, and if we had a uh, something that made sense to to go between, we we could specify that field and then specify two values. I could also say let's say block, and just specify one value. Then we kind of have the same thing up here, but these are filters set range need to be absolute value. So in this case, I will actually use a third, a fourth, I, have, I, I lost count, th thing that if I specify the, uh, the, the, in this case, this case, block is an option field. So I can do colon, colon, and then I get the options. So now I'm actually asking to, okay, I want to see everybody who is blocked for invoicing that our name, the name stock was Peter and the address has nine in them. Uh, but all this is operations on the data set. Um, I could also at this point, without talking to find first, I could ask, um, I could do message and say count equal percent one. So now I, percent one is a placeholder, so now I need to at the placeholder here and I could do customer dot count. So in this case, I'm working on asking it to calculate how many records in the data set, but count does not actually move the pointer to anything. So whatever record is currently being pointed at, that is still getting pointed at, even though I do the count. That bad quarter, by the way, so you, you shouldn't really do that, but, but but it'll it'll work. Um, so so we have now we have two distinct uh, data structures that are in record. But actually, um, remember that when we I I, I did up here, something up here. So I did let's do customer two. And then I'm gonna say uh, customer again temporary. So now. I'm actually changing the context saying, okay, now it's no longer the customer table down in our database. Now it's a memory customer table, in memory table, which is blank to begin with, uh, but it's it's separate from the one in the database. So from that aspect, now we're messing with the context of this one. And and in 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 other frameworks, you would start by defining the context you're working in. And from the context, you will do data sets and from the data sets, you will do, do, do data. But it's all within the same variable here. Uh, another example is let let me let me do customer three. Uh, and still on customer, but in this case, so let's do context here. So now I'm going to do customer. And then I'm going to do change company. So within Business Central, we can have multiple companies. From a database perspective, those are the same table is replicated, not replicated, that's the wrong word, that the, the same table exists in for each company. So if I'm in Business Central, and I have five customers here, and, and I go to a different company, I think I just have the my company thingy also. I go to that one and it will, it, it come on PC, you can do it. 
you can do it. My app is still popular or something. There are no customers in this company. So there are actually two tables sitting in the SQL database, one for each company, two customer tables. They have the same schema, the same fields, everything is, but there's two copy of those. Um, so what I could do here is do a, sorry, I need to do a change company. And now I have changed the context of this variable. So now I could do, let's see, let's do, actually I was I was wanting to work on three, it doesn't really matter right now. So in this case, I would do the count in my company and then I could go and say, uh, and, and to get back, I could just use company name. So I get the company name of the company I'm in and then I'm calling the, the data set function again. So now I'm changing the context of my my uh, my record variable. Um, and it's, it's it's weird. If you look at it from a, you know, from a .NET perspective or a lot of other uh, data frameworks, it's weird that everything is in the same thing. Uh, it also means that, that if you need to you know, you need to change company on, on 10 records. Well, you better get going because then you need 10 change company statements. There is no owning context. That could be, but but that's a different story when we're talking about, then, then we're talking about sessions. So I wasn't, has no intent of actually making this a long video. So let, let me, let me do the, the, the uh, summarizing here. So we have only one type of record, or one type of variables to hold data, to represent data from the database, it's the record database. But it's there's kind of three layers in this. There is the context of where am I? And, and, and change company is a great example of, of functionality on that level. Then there's operations on the data set, setting filters, finding records, and then we got operations on a specific record. So another operation that's very popular is, is validate. So let's say that I want to fill out in the, the name. So this is actually a, a bad pattern I'm, I'm showing here that I'm just putting in a raw value directly into a field. Much better would be for me to to validate a value into a field. By the way, there is a video on that somewhere on the channel. So uh, if you subscribe, you can find it. Uh, um, but validate simulates that a user is typing in the value into the field and running all the business logic that might be associated with that field. Uh, so it's a way better method to ensure that what you're putting into the database is actually what you need to put into the database. Anyway, that's the third layer, but it's all encapsulated into one record, one variable type that could be confusing. But remember, you got the three layers, you got the context, you got the data set, and you got the record. Um, and I think that's it for, for this ELI5. Uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if there's other topics that you want me to do Eli 5 uh, videos on, or if you have, if there's, if there's still something that's confusing about records, let me know in the, in the comments. I read them all. I try to answer everything that deserves an answer. Uh, and uh, until next time, have a wonderful day. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.